Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless is artificial intelligence and transhumanism in bible prophecy and what is artificial intelligence and transhumanism artificial intelligence is the capability of a machine to imitate intelligent human behavior transhumanism is the belief or theory that the human race can evolve beyond its current physical and mental limitations especially by means of science and technology either by merging man with machine or by gene manipulation. In the last days, the book of Daniel prophesied that knowledge would increase. Daniel 12.4 But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. The 2023 World Robot Conference, or WRC in Beijing, brought us this, this, and this. Sheer, a research and development engineer at humanoid robot company X-Robots, said the joints of the humanoids move more naturally and have more subtle micro-expressions and finger movements. Sheer said the robots can control each of its joints, including their skin. He adds they have a new upgrade in vision and haptics, which can show more natural looking micro expressions showing joy, anger, sadness, happiness, and other emotions. This guy looks pretty real. Some visitors liked the lifelike box while others lamented their appearance. What do you think? So in the new Fox Nation special AI, the Terminator effect, a group of artificial intelligence experts explored the dangers of technology and if Hollywood got it right or wrong. Take a look. AI is a perfect target. It's this unfeeling other that makes a great villain. Is this a game or is it real? There's this sort of idea of the creation going out of control. There are some aspects of this that might be representative of the future. If it becomes an AI with an intelligence that's beyond human capability, it could destroy us. Dan Hendricks is the director of the Center for AI Safety. I want to play a, a short clip from the special. Let's watch it. If AI systems go rogue, which is a legitimate possibility, it's very uncertain how we're going to try and put the genie back in the bottle. I can't imagine like a robot coming back and wanting to kill me. <laughs> but it, it does raise some alarms. I'll be back. So I, I know we, we've made movies about it, obviously, with The Terminator. But is this something that could be real? Yeah, so I think a lot of the science fiction works can get some aspects right. They make us consider mm -hmm. possibilities that we haven't thought of before. One of those is the risk of some weaponized AI system being something that we lose control of. So right now we don't have robotics, but we could imagine in possibly the next few years, there being some risk of potentially some bot that is able to hack and mm -hmm. that causing a lot of destruction. Later on, when we get robotics, then a lot of these other scenarios become a possibility, but risks of us potentially losing control of some weaponized AI system, uh, that's something that we can't rule out. Mm. I'm, I'm just curious, Dan, will e AI always need humans to control it? Or does, it, does the technology really have the capability eventually uh, to move on its own? own? So the people developing the AI systems are trying to, as quickly as possible, make it so that they don't need people. They're trying to automate as many jobs as possible so as because this makes a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are trying to make it be the case that they're more autonomous and don't require human intervention and can make decisions faster and better than people. So that's what the current incentives are, and that's what a lot of researchers are trying to do for good or bad. Um, I don't know how we put the genie back in the bottle. It's kind of how you started this segment. 
Um, it looks like it's taken off very fast. A sudden explosion of artificial intelligence has left some Christians pondering the moral implications of this ever expansing technology. CBN's Billy Hollowell has his story. When it comes to the true size and scope of artificial intelligence, the future is anything but certain. Promises of profound technological advancement come alongside fear over job loss and lapsed ethics. Well, one of the problems with the whole issue of artificial intelligence is that that, that landscape could change before I get to the end of this sentence. Dr. Albert Moeller, president of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, says new moral dimensions surrounding AI emerge as fast as the technology evolves. Uh, this is a truly frightening prospect. And I don't say that about everything. What we don't know, we don't know. And this really is setting something loose in the lab. Moeller urges Christians to pay close attention to the claim AI could potentially develop a form of consciousness. What, there is no such thing as a feeling machine. There may be a machine that mimics feeling. We're not merely feeling machines. We're not merely machines that mimic feeling. We're made in God's image. And so there has to be a distinction there, but keeping that distinction straight. And by the way, defending human dignity is gonna uniquely fall upon Christians because the world is cashing out its ability to argue for human dignity. Author Jeff Kinley agrees and adds a warning about allowing AI to diminish human purpose and value. Obviously, one of the biggest concerns is that it, um, it replaces human intelligence. I mean, we are moving uh, as a society towards replacing humanity just about every way possible, replacing human labor, human thought, human writing, uh, trying to pretty much put humanity to the uh, the margins of the uh, of the narrative here. Unrestrained surveillance and the ability to hack the human brain are two potential concerns. Kinley, however, calls censorship and informational control the more immediate threats. The idea of deception because artificial intelligence is not human intelligence and so there's the uh, the obviously the capacity for a lot of bias in there, uh, prescripted inherent bias, but also just the idea of putting out a false narrative and someone says, "Hey, the, the AI must know more than me, so I'm going to trust the AI more than the people who uh, could be called conspiracy theorists. Christian apologist Alex McFarland echoes these concerns and says it all comes down to who's programming the systems and how they're used. Technology is generally amoral. Um, computers aren't necessarily good or bad, but what you do with them, you know, on the moral issues, uh, Christians need to be very concerned about AI because so much of the code and the algorithms that run the internet come from the souls and minds of uh, Silicon Valley liberals. There are many prophecies in Daniel's time that could not come to fulfillment because the technology had not yet been invented. That is why Daniel was told to shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. One of those prophecies is found in Matthew 24 verses 21 and 22. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Flesh is the Greek word sarx, which means flesh, body, human nature, especially a human being. Matthew 24, 22 can be translated like this. And unless those days were shortened, no human nature would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. If Jesus did not return and shorten the days, there would be no human nature saved. Either mankind will merge with artificial intelligence, or artificial intelligence will completely destroy mankind as the dominant species. We begin this hour with a medical breakthrough you're seeing first on CBS Mornings. It could offer hope to millions of people who suffer from paralysis or other movement impairment. A new clinical study is looking at how computer chips implanted in the brain and guided by artificial intelligence can restore links between the brain, the spinal cord, and impaired limbs. And researchers say the results so far are beyond expectations. Our lead national correspondent, David Begno, went to Long Island, New York to meet the study's first participant. He's been paralyzed for three years and is now doing things he never thought possible. Hey. Nice to meet you. I have never walked into an interview looking more forward to shake someone's hand than I was to meet Keith Thomas. May I shake your hand? Of course. Can you feel that? Yes. You can feel my hand. Yeah. Feeling my hand, or anything at all, is a big deal for Thomas. You see, three summers ago, he miscalculated the depth of a pool. He took a dive, and in a flash, his life changed forever. He broke his neck and was paralyzed from the chest down. 
Gone was any feeling below his chest. He was 42 years old. Hope arrived in the form of a medical study that was just getting underway. It was conducted by Northwell Health in New York. Thomas was wheeled into surgery. And while remaining awake and alert. Where do you feel that, Dave? Finger? Which finger? Two or other one? Five small chips were implanted into his brain. The third one? Like your the middle, third one, middle finger? finger? Okay. okay, good. It's called a double neuro bypass. So now we're connecting to the brain. Those chips can now send and interpret signals from his brain to his damaged spinal cord and to his hands and back to his brain. Open, 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 open. Guys. The result is that Thomas's thoughts can now control new movement in his hands. Close, 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 close. Nice. Now, much of the new sensations Thomas feels only happen in the lab with the help of a new computer connected to his skull. But there is something remarkable happening even when he's not attached to that. So like the rest second feel without this. So paralyzed areas can relearn? Yes. And a woman who lost her ability to speak after a stroke is now able to talk again thanks to AI. Experts say it's a medical milestone. ABC's Allison Kosick has the latest. For 18 years, Ann Johnson hasn't said one word until now. Great to see you again. When she was 30 years old, married with kids, Anne had a paralyzing stroke while playing volleyball, robbing her of an ability to communicate other than using a letter board. Now, artificial intelligence has helped give Anne her voice back. You are truly wonderful people. And for the first time in a long time, she spoke with her husband, Bill. I was thinking about running to the store. What time will you be home? It was an emotional moment to hear her voice again, um, you know, that we used a clip from her wedding video to kind of restore her voice the way it sounded. A team of doctors and researchers at the University of California, San Francisco and UC Berkeley discovered a way to use Anne's brain signals and translate them into words using artificial intelligence. We have electrodes that sit on the surface of Anne's brain. When she tries to move her mouth as if she was saying, a word or a sentence, we decode that activity into sounds and the avatar movements that correspond to the movements that she would have tried to make. Metzger says it's the recent advances in AI that led them to the ability to synthesize speech with the avatar. We decode Anne's brain signals using uh, new AI algorithms and they're essential to being able to do this work. Knowledge is increasing rapidly in accordance with Daniel's prophecy. Events are happening faster than we can process them, yet nothing startles or amazes us much anymore. In our time, the time of the end, we are witnessing the technology that will bring about the end of days, climaxing in the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Daniel 12, 9 and 10. And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be purified, made white, and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Just as Daniel recognized Jeremiah's prophecy that the end of Israel's 70-year Babylonian captivity was near, the wise in our time are recognizing the signs of the times given in Bible prophecy that the time of Jesus' return is near. Daniel 2.28 But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. From King Nebuchadnezzar's dream, Daniel prophesied of five world empires to emerge from that time forward. The Babylonian Empire, succeeded by the Medo-Persian Empire, succeeded by the Grecian Empire, succeeded by the Roman Empire, succeeded by the last days empire of the Antichrist. Daniel's interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's dream about a statue is rather straightforward until you get to verse 43. Daniel 2.43 As you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. Seed is the Hebrew word zera, which means posterity. Definition of posterity is future generations. Daniel 2.43 can be translated like this. As you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the future generations of men, 
but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. In these end times, is it possible Daniel's prophecy of a world empire of iron mixed with clay was a prophecy of a time when humanity, clay, and its inventions, machines of iron, would become so intermingled as to become nearly identical, but never able to fully become one? In these very end times, scientists are now able to implant men with brain chips and other parts that indeed make them part machine. The mingling has come to the point that men have invented robots empowered by artificial intelligence while implanting machine parts, iron, into men, clay. Daniel 2.44 and 45 And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall not be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Inasmuch as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God has made it known to the king what will come to pass after this. The dream is certain, and its interpretation is sure. Jesus Christ, the stone, will return and destroy this last day's empire of the Antichrist, and his kingdom will stand forever. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.